It's Fight Back Friday. I try not to bring you... Well, as a, I try to bring you news where people are standing up, fighting back, and winning. This one is early, but first, this is going to just... It'll drive you out of your mind. Uh, however, by the end, you're going to love this story. Federal government recently told a Catholic hospital in Oklahoma to either blow out its small candle or stop serving the elderly, disabled, and low-income patients. St. Francis Health System is the 12th largest hospital in the nation. The health system cares for 400,000 patients a year. It has given away more than $650 million in free medical care in the past five years alone. It employs 11,000 Oklahomas. Oklahomans. St. Francis' mission is to extend the presence and healing ministry of Christ in addition to providing compassionate and top-notch care to its patients. St. Francis lives out its religious mission by maintaining multiple chapels throughout the hospital. Each has been blessed by the local bishop. So what is the problem? If you're a Catholic, you will understand this right away. If you are not, let me educate just a little bit. 1960, they open their doors and they have a sanctuary candle. If you walk into any Catholic church, there is always one either hanging from the ceiling or on a pillar somewhere near the altar, and it is in double glass, and it is a giant candle that burns constantly. The candle is never out. It's, there's, this is something that Catholics, uh, it is the ever-present uh, representation of the living Christ, that he is always with us. So this is a really big deal to Catholics. Well, the uh, government has come in and uh, decided that they have to get rid of that open flame. It's been there since 1960. Uh, they got to re- get rid of that open flame because it poses a danger. Let me explain. The flame is not near medical equipment and patients. It's shielded by two glass holders. It sits on a brass basin, is affixed to the wall, has a brass top covering it, and sprinkler heads just above it. But the federal government said, we're going to shut you down unless you put the flame out. Well, unfortunately, um, there is an attorney... That didn't like that too much. And she just wrote Secretary Becerra and said, in 25 days, you will cripple the operation of the premier, one of the premier hospitals in the state of Oklahoma, simply because they keep a candle in the hospital chapel. If you refuse to accredit St. Francis Hospital South, it will result in such unreasonable financial losses to the St. Francis Health System that it will, would abruptly and immediately jeopardize its services to the elderly, disabled, low-income patients that rely on Medicare, Medicaid, Children's Health Insurance Program, yada, yada, yada. Uh, If you go to court, you will lose. I write in the hopes that you will see reason, or at least the law, and we can skip to the easy part. That attorney is with us now. Her name is Lori Windham, and she is part of the Beckett. She's vice president and senior counsel at the Beckett Law Firm. Uh... Hello, Lori. Glenn, hello. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, I, I read your letter and it made me all warm inside. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so this, is, this isn't about, I mean, the, the hospital has pilot lights. Uh, they have flames that are all over the hospital that if you extinguish this one, you would have to turn off all of the pilot lights, but they're not asking for that. This is clearly an attack on the religion. You know, I have been doing religious liberty work for many years now at Beckett. That's all we do. And this one shocked even me. I'm not easily shocked anymore. But the idea that a federal agency is going to come after your ability to serve the poor, the elderly, and the disabled just over a sanctuary candle when they're willing to make waivers for all these other things. This is not how any of this is supposed to work. So, uh, I mean, I, I like your confidence that 
you're going to lose. Uh, and you would you would lose with this Supreme Court. Um, but how open and shut is it uh, locally in circuit courts? How, how open and shut is this? Uh, it is open and shut because we have first the Constitution, which our federal agencies ought to be paying attention to. Uh, and we also have laws in the books like the Religious Freedom Restoration Act that make it clear that if the government is going to restrict your religious exercise, it has to have a very good reason. This is a textbook case of not having a good reason. Uh, but I, I want to tell you, this is breaking right now. We just got a letter from CMS saying that they have seen the light. And in fact, they are going to allow the candle to continue oh. to glow and to light the chapel. What Now, see, this is even a happier ending than I thought we had. <laughs> Thank you for breaking that news. Uh, so this is over because you guys stood up. That's exactly right. And that's what's so important to know. You know, you get these these letters from these federal bureaucrats, and they think that if they just tell the religious people, no, you don't really have to do this. No, you're going to pay, you know, this unbelievable amount of money if you don't give in, that people are just going to give in. And it shows the power of a single candle. It shows the power of someone who's willing to stand up and say, no, this is my faith, and I'm going to fight for it. I'm not going to buckle. I think that, Lori, we have more religious freedom now than we've had maybe in a hundred years and people don't understand. Uh, if you stand up now for your religious freedom, I mean, they, people are putting uh, the 10 commandments back in front of courthouses and in front of, you know, the city or County buildings because you have the right to do it. All of these things that have been taken down the crosses and everything else, people don't realize you've won this now, put them back up. Uh, go the religious liberty that you have thought you lost, it's back. And some of this stuff needs to be challenged that you don't, you, you know, like this. They start to encroach right now. Religious liberty is very strong. Am I wrong? You're exactly right. And, you know, we take some of these cases to the Supreme Court, and sometimes we're getting 9 0 wins, not 5 4, not 6 3, 9 nothing protecting religious freedom. And so I think that right now, those who are opposed to religious freedom uh, are going to depend on, you know, on scaring people, on canceling people, on telling them, no, you can't do this. And what people need to understand is the law is on their side. The courts are protecting their rights. It is possible to stand up and say, no, we're not going to allow this to happen to us. So we saw the FBI target uh, the Catholic Church, the extremists, you know, um, and call them extremists and uh, possible terrorists, and they are trying to infiltrate the Catholic Church. Uh, there was another story, I can't remember what it was, I, I uh, read this story yesterday about another 19 Catholic churches that are under attack from the government, and now this Catholic hospital. Is the government specifically targeting Catholics? You know, I, I don't know where all of this is coming from. I, it's absolutely a disturbing trend. Uh, and I think that it shows that when people are standing up for their faith, others are paying attention and some of them aren't going to like it. You know, one thing I want to mention legally here and some of the protections that have actually been strengthened uh, is the Supreme Court has said when, when people start to do this, when people in government start to crack down on religious freedom and it's these really blatant violations of rights, they can actually be personally liable for what they have done. Uh, the courts can actually go after them individually. Uh, and that's something important for people to understand is that there are real consequences. If you're going to crack down, if you're going to discriminate, if you're going to go after those who are out there living faithfully and following the law. Uh, one last thing. Uh, your law firm is nonprofit. Uh, you have been fighting for religious freedom. That's all you do. Um, at your law firm. Is this something if somebody is having a problem anywhere, they can call and run their case by you guys, or is it just Oklahoma? Uh, we, are, we are nationwide. This is uh, at Beckett Law. We'd be happy to talk to you. We provide all of our services pro bono. We are here to defend religious freedom. God bless you. Thank you so much, Lori.
And great news. Thank you. Thank you for that. BeckettLaw.org. BeckettLaw.org. Don't take it anymore. Don't take it. There's this guy, this pastor up in Minnesota. um, They just passed a law of conversion therapy, against conversion therapy uh, in Minnesota. And you can do it as long as you don't charge. And this pastor got up and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, conversion therapy against anything uh, is free. I'll, I'll Conversion therapy against any sin, any problem you have, we'll treat for free because that's what we do. However, because they say we can't charge, which we don't anyway, because they say we can't charge, that's an encroachment on our religious belief. And so I'm going to charge a dollar. I'm not doing it to get rich. I am doing it. So they come after and they learn their lesson. No encroachment on religious liberty. They, we've, that is the only real shield, we, armor of God. Put the entire armor of God on and start pushing back and holding to our religious liberty.